Hi guys, Greg back with another video for you. Today's video is going to be my starting lineup. So most of you know the drill with this one. Uh, for those of you who don't, this was an idea started by Brandon, aka Cutler Supreme SL. And the idea is to name your main players in your fragrance collection for six different situations. So the categories that he set initially were, number one, your signature scent, number two, your work scent, number three, your night out scent, Number four, your close contact romantic scent. Number five, a daring scent. And number six, your upper class suit and tie scent. I'm going to cheat a little bit here and pick two for each scenario. They're not season based, so I haven't gone for one for hot weather, one for cold weather. I just couldn't narrow it down to, to one for each category. So first category is signature scent. Uh, like many of you guys, I've got too many fragrances to actually have a signature scent. I try and rotate. Um, all my fragrances and, and wear them all as much as I can which means I tend to only get round to my favourite ones maybe once a month but doing it that way it keeps it fresh I don't get tired of anything so that's, that works for me if I were to have a signature scent it would be either one of the two fragrances that you can see here so it would either be Jaws Fahrenheit little backup bottle or Gucci Pour Homme De, or Gucci Pour Homme 2. Little backup bottle there. So, probably I've probably tried four, five hundred fragrances, either tried or owned. Regardless of whether they're niche, regardless of their designer, cost, anything, Fahrenheit is still number one for me of all time. Um, it was created in 1988, but it still smells current today. Um, I don't know what it is about it that I love so much. There's, I can't really put my finger on it. I mean, you you probably all know about the petroleum note in there. And it's probably that. I don't know what creates it. I don't know whether it's in a cord that's created by a com combination of notes. But whatever it is, it just really works for me. I've, on first impression, that I've never been blown away so much as I was when I smelt that the first time. Um, the Gucci Paul Homme de, uh, This one featured in my last video, which was in my top 10 summer fragrances. Um, the thing with this one that does it for me is the tea note it's just done perfectly other fragrances have a tea note in there most of them tend to go overboard with it I mean Lartazan Parthumers tea for two for example a very popular fragrance it's just too strong on the tea it doesn't work for me but Gucci Pour on two, two or Dur is done perfectly so those are the two signature scents so next category is work scent let's move these bad guys back a bit here make some room so for this category, um, you want to go with something quite safe. Um, I, I, I've got a commercial job, a customer facing job, and it's not really too clever to wear anything that chokes people out or that people find offensive. So I'll always go for something quite safe. So my two picks here are, first one is Reef Gorge. A little bit of overkill, a few backups. And the second one is John Varvatos, the original one. So Reef Gorsh for me is is up there with um, Fahrenheit and Gucci Pour on too. Is it's been close to my favourites of all time. It's just a be really beautifully blended scent. I've got the old form formulation. You can see the tin can version, um, and I've got a couple of backups as well because it's getting more difficult to find in the UK. Um, I haven't really bothered with the La Collection version because I love this one so much I've got no need to really um, it's the ultimate barbershop fragrance this one big rosemary hit at the top star anise, bergamot, lavender, patchouli in there very safe, no one's going to be offended by it it's um, about as safe as you can get I think um, second one, this one, the John Varvatos I really love this one um, it's got fig leaf and plum in there but to me it smells more it's more cherry actually which is probably a combination of those two um, this is one of my favourite bottles actually in terms of the actual bottle design you can see it's got this leather surround, it's kind of like a belt it's got all the detail engraved there and that makes sense because you could imagine wearing this one with like a pair of jeans and a leather belt and a t-shirt it fits quite well but it also works well as a professional scent for work smart dress um, it gets criticised for, for, for performance but it actually lasts quite a long time for me and I get compliments on that so it must actually be projecting as well so they're my two work scent picks 
So the next category is the night out scent. Move these guys up here. So my two picks here are, um, so in the last video I, I said that Carolina or Carolina Herrera 212 was one of my main picks and it is but it's going to get slightly pushed out in favour of this one. Um, Bleu de Chanel, really um, well reviewed and um, lots of talk about this one within the fragrance community and it is a good one in my opinion. It's I don't know what it is I like about it. It's far from unique. Um, it's it smells, you know, it's, there's nothing particularly distinctive in there. I think it just does that citrus aromatic thing better than than others that I've got. It just smells like it's got a better quality blend. Um, there's some woods in there, but I only picked that up slightly. This women absolutely love this fragrance for whatever reason. So if there's any single guys looking for a, a good night out scent where you want to get compliments, this is a good choice. So that's Bleu de Chanel, and the second one is this baby, Allure Home Edition Blanche. Now this one also featured in my last video. Um, one of the best blended designer scents ever for me. Awesome Sicilian leather note in there and it's a great night out fragrance. So that one is going to sit there and that's my second night out fragrance choice. Next category is your close contact romantic scent. So this category you don't really need to go for a powerhouse, you don't, it doesn't need to be particularly strong or projecting because the idea of of this category is that the person's going to be close to you. But I'm probably always going to pick gourmands for this category because it stands to reason you want to smell, you know, kind of appetising in that close contact situation. So my two picks are based on the bottles in my collection that I get the best reaction from from my wife, and those two are Thierry, Thierry Mugler's Pure Havane. And the other one is Rocha's Man. So they're the two that she likes best, and therefore they're the two that I pick. They're not necessarily two of my favourite favourite scents, but I do think they're both really good. Um, to me, Pure Van comes off more. It's more of a boozy honey, really, to me, than and cherry than the Cuban cigars that its build has been. Um, this is actually my, my wife's favourite of all in my collection. She's a real Thierry Mugler fan. She's got about three or four of her own. And it's got a distinctive DNA in there, as you know, which goes across the women's fragrances as well. Um, so it wouldn't be my top 20 in my collection, but it's, it's, it's a good one and she likes it. Second pick is Rocha's Man. Now this one is, this is really foody, in inverted commas, I'd say. It's delicious. This one makes you want to eat yourself when you're wearing it. It's got coffee, vanilla, it's got chocolate in there. And I hate coffee as a drink or a food flavour, but actually in here it works really, really well. And it does make your mouth water. This gets compared a lot to New Harlem by Bomb Number no. 9. But to me it's far more similar to Givenchy's Plain Tents. And they are very similar in my book. Uh, really, really nice one. Well priced. I think I paid about £24 for that, for a 50ml bottle, which is about $36 US dollars. So definitely, you know, a reasonably priced one. So next category, fifth category, daring scent. So I've got a couple of Nasamato's uh, decants that would fit in here, but I'm only featuring fragrances in any of these videos that I actually have a bottle of. So I'm going to go with, firstly I'm going to go with this, Jaipur Hom. And the second one I'm going to go with is Chanel's Egoist. Um, so... I've recently done a review on Egoist, so if you want to get my full opinion on that, go and check the video out. Um, Jay, Jaipur Hom, man, I, I absolutely love this stuff. This is really, really good. This is the EDT version I've got. There's also an EDP, but this EDT lasts forever, so I'm quite happy with it. The nose behind this one is Anik Monado, so that's got to be worth at least a look on the basis of that. I'm not going to go into it too much, because I'm actually going to do a review on this one soon. But all I will say is that it's it's very oriental. It's very it's got that vibe, different to most things I've smelt. And this is probably, if not in my top ten of all time, very close. It is absolutely fantastic in my opinion. Jaipur Hom, and there's Egoist. Final category. So this is the upper class suit and tie scent. This one was probably the easiest to pick for me, as I've got I've got three actually that I'd always reach for in this scenario when you're really trying to 
create a professional imp um, impression. The one that missed out of the three would be um, Landstom de Guerlain, the original, the EDT, which for daytime is more of a daytime one for me. I use the EDP as an evening scent. So that's just missed out. The two that have got in are both from the same house, and they are, and this one will be quite familiar to you, Creed's Ventus. And the second one, again, you've probably heard of this, Queen's Green Irish Tweed. So they, I will always reach for those two, those are all the Landstone de Guerlain. They're probably the two most critically acclaimed releases from Creed, um, and with good reason actually. They are both fantastic. They're not actually my favourites in the house, uh, neither of them. I'll probably talk about that in a future video. But for black tie formal occasions, they're my favourite from that or any house. Um, again, I'm not going to go into them too much. There's a wealth of awesome reviews out there. Most of you guys know all about them. Needless to say, they're definitely worth getting a sample out of if you haven't tried them and you you want to look at them. They're not cheap. You wouldn't want to blind buy these, um, although it's unlikely that you'll dislike them. So, you know, if you're going to want to try these, get yourself a one mil decant or something like that. So, guys, that's my starting lineup. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks everybody for your continued support. It's, this community is brilliant. I'm really glad to be a part of it. So what's coming next for me? Well, I've got a short list of about 15 fragrances that I want to review first. And I'm working on two or three that are part of the way through, I guess. Um, I'll probably have one out maybe tomorrow. Um, so stay tuned for those. Thanks so much again, guys, for watching. And I'll see you all soon. Cheers.